This field experiment is set up to monitor how various species adapt. Located in Cirque's marshland, it's the longest running such experiment of its kind. Our CO2 study is a 23-year study on how plants will respond to increasing atmospheric CO2. Scientists have sunk large open tubes deep into the marshland to expose native grasses to varying amounts of carbon dioxide. You've probably heard about the fact that plants can help us out of our situation where we're, we're increasing CO2 in the environment so radically that we're seeing changes in climate. Um, and there's discussion that plants can continue to absorb that CO2 and effectively um, buffer the, the activity that, that we're doing. It turns out that many native plants can't cope with the increased CO2 levels, which paves the way for invasive species to move in, replacing the native plants. Those new species may help the CO2 problem, but they also may deprive wildlife of sources of food and shelter, changing the wetlands forever. If there's more CO2 in the atmosphere, it's actually being pushed. The ocean acts as a sink for CO2. That's right, the entire ocean will be adversely affected by higher levels of CO2. And when you push CO2 into the ocean, there's a chemical reaction that pushes the ocean's chemistry to be more acidic. One of the first ocean creatures to feel the effects of global warming is the eastern oyster, its population already hurt by over-harvesting and pollution. As global warming increases CO2 levels, the water's acidity also rises, and that weakens the oyster shells. If acidity gets high enough, the shelves literally can dissolve. Researchers are trying to find out how well the eastern oyster can adapt by gradually exposing oyster larvae to higher and higher CO2 concentrations. We're trying to see whether they just dissolve uh, you know, when it gets too ascetic or whether they have some mechanism to cope with that. If the eastern oyster can't cope, an oyster that can might well take its place in the Chesapeake.